Hello, welcome back to the Cars Are Cozy YouTube channel. My name is Chiro De Siena and I am sitting in the brand new Honda HRV. And before we continue with this review, remember that Cars Are Cozy is the best place to buy or sell your new car. So check out the links in the description below. And if you're interested in a used Honda, we have hundreds to choose from. You'll find a link to all our Honda stock right there. Okay, here we go, the new Honda HRV. Theme song. Dream Search Drive. Dream Search Drive. Cars.coza. Budget insurance. Affordable because you can't afford not to. So what is it? Well, this is Honda's, I think, their first attempt at what we call a boutique SUV. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that the car is sort of more of an accessory than a car. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you're potentially buying the car as more of a statement of style and status than you are for practicality and mobility and actually doing useful things in your vehicle. Now, there are quite a few cars like this already out there. You've got, for instance, Mini, who's basically built an entire brand on having their cars as boutique cars. More recently, you've got cars like the Opel Mokka coming out, which we reviewed quite recently as well. Cars like the Audi Q2, the BMW X2, for instance, these are all cars that place style ahead of practicality. But I think Honda is trying and have succeeded in straddling those two very different aspects of vehicle design. And I'll tell you why. So let's compare it to say the Opel Mokka because they're not actually too far off in terms of pricing. Now, 520 gets you a top spec Opel Mokka, 554 gets you the top spec of this, although the lower spec one comes in way cheap at 469. But remember when I drove that Mokka, and maybe we'll cut in a few scenes, very little space in the back seats, not good enough for adults really, and very little boot space. Now the big difference here is that you've got Honda's magic seating, which I'll show you in a minute, it's brilliant. You've got loads of leg room in the back and you have a big boot. And somehow they've packaged it all very cleverly because there's not a particularly large car. It's easy to hustle around the city and it's easy to park. So how have they done that? If you compare this HRV to the HRV that it's replacing, it's slightly longer, slightly wider, but interestingly, slightly shorter. And that's given them a little bit more dimensions, a bit more space, which they've mostly thrown into the cabin. It's some really clever engineering and some really clever packaging. So for me, the Honda has a lot of strengths in terms of its practicality. It's a very useful car. I quite like the design. I think it looks quite futuristic. It looks quite unique out on the road although i put the picture of the car on my twitter and uh, you lot on my twitter page were not such a huge fan of the design i quite like it i think it's quite nice but here's where we start getting into some of the issues if you are interested in a new honda hrv you can choose from one engine and one gearbox, that's it. That's all you've got to choose from. It's a 1.5 liter four cylinder, naturally aspirated petrol mancha under the bonnet, all going through a CVT gearbox. And I think that's a bit of a pity. There's no diesel and importantly, there's no hybrid, which is available overseas and which Honda says they are bringing here, but it's probably gonna take them about 18 to 24 months. If this was a hybrid, I think South Africans would be very, very interested. Now I know that it's difficult for manufacturers to get stock in this country. I know it's difficult and I know worldwide the supply of cars is under strain as well. The semiconductor ship shortage, the shipping crisis, it's a really difficult time for manufacturers. But think about it this way, Toyota, which sells the only other SUV hybrid at the moment, They've had a terrible run. They've, I really feel for them. Their, their prospecting factory in Durban got completely flooded. It's gonna take them a long time 
to get it right again and they just invested and they were building hybrids there it's a pretty terrible tragedy as far as these things go and they had already underestimated their demand for their hybrid so right now if you want a toyota corolla cross hybrid which would sort of be this car's competitor so to speak you you just can't get one dealers are saying eight to twelve months and it's not even a guarantee so if honda if you're listening honda sa try get this hybrid out here as quick as you can i know it will push the price up but south africans are looking for a way to bring down their running costs and hybrids are very good at that but let's chat then about the running costs in a car like this now the choice to go with cbt is quite an important one because it basically weighs up the driving dynamics of the car with efficiency cvts are very efficient but they're not particularly good to drive now that means a couple of things one you do have good fuel consumption in here and that's great that's what we're all looking for at the moment we are all experiencing the pain at the pumps and i think it's only going to get worse to be honest so right now i'm averaging 7.8 liters to the 100 in this i think if you're nice and conservative and you bang it into economy mode down here and you stick it in economy mode and you try not be in a hurry getting anywhere you'll get this into the sixes and for a car this size for a petrol powered car as well that's really really good i mean into the sixes is pretty much where the rav4 hybrid that i drove recently was averaging so honda have nailed it in terms of efficiency the downside of course of the cvt is that it does let me not say ruin it compromises your driving experience so let me give you a little bit of advice if you're the sort of driver who doesn't mind pootling around you know just under the speed limit or you're not trying to race the traffic you're not driving anywhere in a hurry you're not trying to pull adventurous overtakes on the highway this car will suit you fine it's very much geared and engineered and set up for driving in a relaxed style if you enjoy sporty driving if you find yourself that you're a bit of an enthusiast and you enjoy pushing the car a little bit you are not going to like this car trust me you're not gonna like it every now and then when i've put my fast my enthusiast hat on and taken this car for a drive it's not great it's not very enjoyable the car whines a bit it drones a bit it's quite slow it's it doesn't struggle but it's straining a bit to get up to 120 k's an hour especially with your foot flat so keep that in mind you've got 89 kilowatts and only 145 newton meters coming from this engine even down here at the coast it doesn't feel particularly well powered so up on the reef with that sort of 15 percent power drop that you get because you guys have got no oxygen up there yeah this it's going to feel even slower <laughs> in terms of ride quality ride comfort the interior noise coming into the cabin all very impressive i really like the way the suspension is set up ironically for a car that's quite underpowered it's actually quite sporty in its setup but it's not crashy the suspension doesn't feel wooden it deals with road imperfections really well and in terms of road noise tire noise wind noise Honda have managed to dial most of that out it's a well insulated cabin so it is the sort of car that is very comfortable to drive around the city and comfortable at highway speeds as well maybe I should let me actually demonstrate what like a 40 to 80 pool sounds like so foot flat there's 80 yeah see what I mean it's not a foot flat kind of car it's just not that kind of car <laughs> so where does this fit in with the competition as i've said it's definitely a sort of mock arrival just a bit bigger but more practical if we play the chinese card it does cost quite a bit more than cars from those manufacturers haval and cherry in particular you can get an h6 for quite a bit less than this it's a much larger car the cherry tigo 8 is a seven seater so that's got one up on this car as well 
and that's about the same price and then the Tigo 7 which we reviewed recently well that's like a good 100k less than the car I'm sitting in now but if you compare it to its more established rivals I think this is a bit of a difficult sell for Honda it's definitely cheaper than your X2s and your Audi Q2s for instance but how much are South Africans willing to pay for the badge on the nose? Traditionally quite a lot. I think the challenge for Honda here is that they have to convince the market that this car is appealing enough, premium enough to attract South African motorists and get them to sort of forget about the badge on the nose. Welcome to the interior of the Honda HRV. Now, as mentioned, there are only two variants of the HRV you can choose from comfort and executive. 469 for the comfort, 554 for the executive. It's about an 85,000 Rand difference. So, what do you not get in the comfort that you get in the executive to make up that price difference? And should you buy the more expensive model? Well, I have turned to the trusty cars.coza app which you'll get completely free in your app store there's also links to the apps in the description below and we've got this really cool compare tool along with up-to-date specs and pricing on every car that's listed on the south african market every new car so the biggest difference that i can see so far is that in the comfort model the cheaper model you don't get curtain airbags so four airbags in the comfort six in the executive now quite impressively with both models you do get a full suite of safety systems so brake assist traction control abs and stability control which is tech that sometimes gets stripped out of other cars in our market to bring the price down so that's something to keep in mind on the cheaper model, you don't get the adaptive cruise control. Uh, you don't get front fog lights. You don't get lane keeping assist where it sort of nudges you back into your lane. So that's all gone, unfortunately. You don't get electric folding mirrors. Don't get the panoramic roof, the auto lights or the high beam assist. That's all gone, unfortunately. And you don't get the electronic, not electronic, electric tailgate, the powered tailgate. So there is the spec difference between the two variants, but let me give you my overall feeling about the cabin. It's a Honda, so it feels particularly well screwed together. It really, really does. In terms of the quality of the materials, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Like there's some cheap plastics here, and then other places there's this nice soft touch happening everywhere, and it all feels quite quality. Also, this piano black is quite a nice touch, and there's your wireless charging pad down there. Another little criticism that I have that annoyed me a bit while I was driving this car is there's no volume knob. I just prefer a volume knob. You know, if you quickly want to turn the sound down, it's a quick knob turn. Otherwise, you've got two volume buttons here and then over there as well. So I just found that I was just turning off the radio for instance, if I just needed some quiet all of a sudden. Pretty comprehensive infotainment system though. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's all included as well. It's not wireless though, it is wired. So bits of it feel very modern and bits of it feel a little bit previous generation such as the analog dials. But for me, not a deal breaker. The interior is definitely good enough for a daily. The back seats are very comfortable. I'm very impressed actually. Look at that space. That's massive. That's my driving position. This is like limousine levels of space back here. And the seats are very comfy, very well designed. Could do long journeys in this. Anyone over six foot, 1.8 meters. No one likes it when I talk about in feet. Anyway, you've got two USB ports down here, two air vents as well, which you can open and close. A third seat belt and where is the seat belt oh here it is there it is third seat belt proper seat belt for the middle passenger and then i wanted to show you this so you your panoramic screen is split in two right and then it is tinted so you don't necessarily have to do anything to it. it it's fine it's actually nicely tinted but if you do want to close it up you get these two panels which come in a nice bag in the boot and then these clip into place like that and like that 
which is fairly straightforward. But you just know that your four-year-old boy is going to destroy that the first opportunity that he gets because four-year-old boys are just like a force of nature, just break everything. This is a bit awkward, but I have to be here so that I can show you how clever these seats are. So it's called Honda's Magic Seating. I'm not kidding. That's actually what it's called. And it's patented, so you'll find this in no other car. But it does two very clever things. When you release the seat and you fold it down, look how the buttress, the bit where your butt goes, folds into the footwell. And that means you get this completely flat load area and there's a little flap to cover the gap between the seat and the boot and that makes this car extremely practical it's really impressive actually and then when that's in place let's say you have something of a odd size to load and you need this area then this goes up oh where is it there we go and quite cleverly this is the lock for the mechanism so you push that a bit back lock that into place that's not going anywhere anymore let me actually do this side uh, so we can demonstrate how spacious that is. No, that didn't lock. Try again. There we go. It's locked in place. Look at that. Look how much space there is. So much space. Oh, I'm a bit stuck now. Oh, okay. There, but there we go. Look at that. There's a lot of space in there for your things. That is actually very cool. Not going to lie. That's pretty smart. <laughs> Now I've been comparing this car to the Mokka and I must be honest, I thought the car had a bit of a bigger boot. I don't know why I thought it was bigger. It's definitely bigger than the Mokka, but that's a pretty low bar to jump over. So, but overall though, it's not massive. One of the problems is that it's got a full-size alloy spare. Now, South African buyers love a full-size spare. In Europe, it would probably just be gone and you'd have a huge amount of depth to your boot but here they've had to put that in so it is nice that it has a full-size alloy spare and south africans do seem to prefer that but it does come at the cost of a lot of boot space as you can see when we load our cooler box test unit that's whew, yeah that's about a only about a three and a half cooler box boot that which is one of the poorest cooler box scores we've seen in a while and it is powered and this is your parcel shelf let's see do we have the height for a cooler box oh this is going to be close yeah no it's there it's got the height so it does have cooler box height but other than that pretty compromised boot space So let me take you over the pricing and warranties again. You get the Comfort model for $469. You get this, the Executive model, for $554. Pretty much full house. There's not much you can add to this. Everything you see here, so all the sunroofs, all the bells and whistles, pretty much included in your purchase price. In terms of your warranty and service plan, it's a little bit curious. You've got a good warranty, very good warranty. Five year, 200,000 K. That's probably one of the better ones on the market. But your service plan is four years, 60,000. So at 60,000 Ks, depending on how much you drive, you might hit that quite quickly. And then to maintain your warranty, the services are going to be for your account. So something to keep in mind, but not bad value wrapped up into that purchase price. Predominantly the way I feel about this car is that the way it's been set up, the choice of drivetrain, this is a city car. And even though it has the practicality of being a car that you could say do a road trip in, the drivetrain for me is not really suited for open road driving. Gonna struggle a bit to overtake. So keep that in mind. If you're just looking for a nice, well-built, reliable run around, do the school run down to the shops whatever the case is then i think this car ticks a lot of boxes but i don't think it's so much of a dual purpose car where you'd be happy to drive down to the coast or whatever the case may be
Right, thanks very much for watching. Tons of links in the description below. Go have a look. You'll find links to all of our content, our apps, etc. And remember, Casa Cosa is not only the best place to find your next car. We have the largest selection of used cars right now. We've actually just gone over 70,000 cars on our site. But it's also the easiest place to sell your car. Check out our new sell your car system. You'll find it very easily on our website. We'll put it on the screen and give it a bash. You know, put some money in your pocket. Get rid of your current car if that's, uh, if that's what you're looking to do. Right, I'm out of here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we'd love to have you on board. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, be safe. Cars.coza is so much more than just a YouTube channel. You've got to check out our app. It's been downloaded over 1 million times in the South African Android store alone. The links are in the description below, and I promise you it is the easiest way to find your next car. Budget insurance. Affordable, because you can't afford not to. Cars.coza.